Hi everyone and welcome back to episode two of our design system series. Last time we worked on colors so you can go back and do that if you want or you can just continue on from here because today we're going to talk about typography. We're going to create a typography scale for our design system. I'm going to go through my kind of best practice of doing it so feel free to follow along in the design file in the description below. You also have a link there to sign up for Figma if you've never used it before. Let's jump in. So in the file, you will find this kind of typography scale ready for you to go. And we'll work through how we differentiate these. What's the best way to do it? To start off, I want to look at what font scale I want to use. So there are so many plugins and websites out there that can do this for you. Recently, I've enjoyed this plugin that's called Type Scales. Uh, there are so many out there, as you can see. Uh, but this one is one that I kind of like and what I'm going to use now. So when I run it, you can see that it gives us this nice little font scale and I can change what sort of scale I'm using. So let's have a look. My base size is going to be 16, which is my body. And I need one, two, three, four, five going up. So five above it. And I need three going down. And that's just because that's how I decided I want to set it up. But if you need more or less, go ahead. And I want to round the values. If I just click on this, you can see that all of the values are going to be like dot something. I really prefer to just work with rounded ones. So I'll do that. Now you've got the different scales over here. And this just shows you the scale that it's going to use to move on one size up and one size down. It kind of uses multipliers of that number. Um, and again, personal preference. You can see here, these are the usual scales that you will see on any of these plugins or any of these websites will use these types of scales. So if you use golden ratio, you see that it really grows exponentially. If I use augmented fourth, it's a bit calmer. Minus second, these ones are a bit smaller because you can see that the scale is smaller. Personally, I really like to use major third. It's a classic, so why not? So that's the one I'm going to use for myself and I can generate that. Now, once it's generated it, I'm actually not gonna use this, but I'm gonna use these values to copy that over into my table over here. You can see that the H1 is 49 over here and it's set to 120 in line height, which is great. So I'll select all of my H1s and my font that I'm using is Poppins because that's the font I want for my design system, but you can go with any font that you want. So I'll change this to 49 and then in line height, I'll just type 120%. Um, and then I'll just keep going and do it for all of them. So H2 is going to be 39 and 120%. So the automatic line height is going to be 150% of whatever your font size is. You can see my font size is 31. So the automatic line height is 47. You can see it kind of grayed out there. For, for the larger numbers, it is recommended to use 120% because it just brings it down a tiny bit. You don't need that much space with the bigger font sizes. So H4 is 25 and 120%. And then my headline is 20. For my body, I'm going to put it on 16. And I am going to keep it on 150% because when you start going down in the font size, you do want the line height to be a bit bigger. So you have more breathing room when you're reading those smaller text sizes. Then subtitle is going to be 13. And for this one, what are they used? Yeah, so they still use 120. I'm gonna keep this one on 150 for now. And then with caption, it's going to be 10, which is quite small. And then for the footnote, I don't wanna use eight because that's a bit too small for me. So I'm gonna keep it on 10 as well. Caption, actually, I'm gonna make it 11. Yeah, so I use my plugin. I use that major third scale, but then I can stray from it a bit if I need or if I want. Now, as you can see, I do have a space for bold and light. So I'm gonna do that now. I'll select all of my bold ones. And then because Poppins is a font that is a font family, it has loads of different weights to it. I do have the ability to make that selection. So I'll make all of them bold and all of the light ones light. Great. Now I'm gonna go in and make some small tweaks because this is a bit boring, right? Why don't I use all of the stuff I have at my disposal? So maybe for H1 and 2, I'm not gonna use bold. I'm actually gonna use black. Well, like that. Maybe actually H2 and H3 can use extra bold. Yes. And then maybe going down, I want to maybe make it a little bit less bold so it's more legible. So subtitle, I might make it semi-bold. Footnote, I'm definitely going to make it medium. And caption, maybe semi-bold as well. Yeah. So you can see it makes it a lot more readable when it, I'm using, it's still bold, so it's still different from this regular one. But if it was just on bold, it can be a bit much when you're not zoomed in. So medium is very helpful. If you have it, use it. Yeah. Same thing for the light ones. Maybe I'll make these two extra light. 
I would not use um, a lighter than light on the smaller fonts because then you just won't be able to read it. I'm slowly building my typography system here and showing the different ways we can differentiate between these different text styles. So now there are different font size and maybe they're using bold as well. They've got different line heights so you can really create that visual hierarchy when you're using text. So now I'm going to go in and make some more changes just to tweak it to be really what I need. So I know I just changed this, but I actually don't think I need a light version of H1, 2 and 3 in my design system. So I'm just going to remove that. I think I don't need a light one for these either. I think maybe only these three will offer a light. I'm not really going to use it a lot anyway. So I think I'm kind of happy with that. And also between the two of these, something that I really like to do is in my smallest font, what I like to do is make it a capitalized text style so if you go into your three dots and click on uppercase it means that everything that is in that text style will always be uppercase and then i might give it a bit more breathing room in the letter spacing so maybe make it like four percent yeah so you can see even though caption is 11 pixels and this is 10, so it's not that big of difference in the font style, but these are very different from each other in their characterization. So if we do use them in our designs, uh, the user will be able to clearly differentiate between the two. So I think I'm happy with this. Obviously feel free to incorporate different fonts if you want, but the guideline and best practice is to never use more than two fonts in your designs. And also you kind of need to have a good reason to do that. I see a lot of times in designs when people go really crazy and do so many different fonts and font styles that don't really go together. I have a whole video that goes really deep into typography if you want, I'll link it somewhere here. But I don't think that's a great idea. Regarding colors, like you saw in the last video, we have created some color tokens that are for titles, subtitles, captions, all of that. So we will use them later on when we're actually in our design and we'll use the text style in combination with the color token and they'll just go wonderfully together. So now it's time to create the actual text styles. Now, as of the time that I'm filming this video, we are still in the first release of variables. So we don't have variables for typography yet. We can use variables to set what is written, but we can't use variables to set the font size or the font style or anything like that. So for now, we're just gonna use good old styles. So if you select all of your text boxes um, and you can see if you're using my file in the layers panel, you can see that they are named as they are in here, which makes it really helpful. If you're using your own file, just make sure to name the text boxes and use the slash to make that little kind of folder. So all the bodies have body slash bold, body slash regular, body slash light, and that will just create a folder in your styles. So I'm selecting all my text boxes and I'll go into my plugin tool again, and I'll look for a plugin called Styler. When I run this, I can generate styles. So it will generate styles from whatever I'm selecting. You can see it's telling me it's created 19 styles. So if I click on nothing, just on the canvas, you can see I've got all of these lovely textiles ready for me to use. So I can see that for some reason it didn't take that percent. Can you see that it says 49 slash 120? That means it took the line height to be 120. No, no. The way to fix that, I'm just gonna command Z. So all of my textiles are gone. Um, and let's fix that quickly. Instead of 120%, why don't we just use math? So we'll write 49 times 1.2, which is basically the same. Uh, and I'll just go ahead and do that for everything. So 49 times 1.2. I guess Styler doesn't really like percentages. So 39 times 1.2. So I've done that for all of my H1s and my headline because they were using that 120%. Uh, let's try again, selecting all of my text boxes, styler, generate styles, great. So that's done that correctly now. So now it's not pretty, but they're using the correct line height, which is 120% of the actual font size. And that was our quick episode two of our design system series. Today we created typography. In the next session, we're going to look at using number variables to create spacing, to create corner radius tokens, all of that so definitely worth a watch don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified when the next episode is uploaded leave a comment below let me know how you're getting on i hope you enjoyed see you at the next one